Greetings and welcome to a series of lectures on intermediate algebra equations and inequalities in one variable. This lecture focuses on quotients. Alright, let's jump into division. In other words, finding quotients. Recall we'll treat the fraction bar as if it's division with the numerator is a set of parentheses and the denominator is a set of parentheses. So something like negative 8 minus 8 all over negative 5 minus 3 is going to be the whole entire numerator, negative 8 minus 8, divided by the whole entire denominator, negative 5 minus 3. Then, because of order of operations, we've got to do what's inside the parentheses first. So, negative 8 minus 8 is negative 16, and negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. So, negative 16 divided by negative 8 is positive 2. Now again, we can apply the same strategy to other examples, but here's what another kind of trick that you want to think about. Basically, I needed one number on top and one number on bottom so I could do the division. Now that's working with all numbers. So right now, negative 5 times negative 4 plus 2 times negative 3 all over 2 times negative 1 minus 5. Now, there is not just one number on top, one value on top, and one value on bottom. So I need to get there from here. So I'm going to do some order of operations. Negative 5 times negative 4 is positive 20. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And I'm going to put those back into my equation. I get 20 plus negative 6 over negative 2 minus 5. Now I'm going to do the individual math. Again, I need one number on top, one number on bottom if I'm going to do that, that division. I can't cross this plus symbol. I cannot just do 2 cancels the 2 out. It doesn't work. It doesn't work like that. You have to have one number on top, one number on bottom. Now, if it was all multiplication on top and all multiplication on bottom, you could do that. But I don't. I have addition and subtraction. Okay, that's positive 14 over negative 7, and that simplifies down to negative 2. Can we try another problem? 2 cubed plus 3 cubed over 2 squared minus 3 squared. Again, you have to ask yourself, is that one number on top? Is that one number on bottom? If it is not, you can't start canceling things out. You have to simplify it first. 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, so I can rewrite my problem as 8 plus 27 over 4 minus 9. Well, 8 plus 27 is 35, and 4 minus 9 is negative 5. So I finally get 35 over negative 5, which is negative 7. All right, let's talk about division with the number of 0. Division with number 0. Let's consider division, something like 6 divided by 3 equals 2. Well, we can rewrite that as multiplication, where it's 6 equals 2 times 3. Now, likewise, we can do the same thing. 0 divided by 5 is 0. And now let's look at it in multiplication form. 0 equals 0 times 5. Is that true? Absolutely. But if we want to try and divide by 0, something like 5 divided by 0, what number will it result? Well, when we look at it in, in multiplication form, that's 5 equals n times 0. Is there a number that you can give me to replace n to make that statement true? Now, just think about it for a minute. Uh, let's try 0. 0 times 0, is that 5? Nope. Uh, 1 times 0, is that 5? Nope. 5 times 0, is that 5? Nope. There's absolutely no number you can give me to replace the variable n to make this statement true. So that's why we cannot divide by 0, and that's why it is undefined. Now let's start talking about division properties of exponents. In a previous lecture, we dealt with properties 1 through 3. Let's continue and start calling them properties 4. If a is any non-zero 
real number, and r is a positive integer, then a to the negative r will equal a 1 over a to the positive r, having a negative power, we can make it positive by bringing it across the fraction line. To bring it the, the exponent to be positive, we're going to cross the fraction line. Now that also goes the other way. If I have 1 over a to the negative r, to make that negative r, I make it positive by bringing it up to the numerator. All right, so let's write 5 to the negative 2 with a positive exponent, and then we're going to simplify. Well, according to our rule, if I have a negative exponent, I bring it down into the whole entire number. 5 to the negative 2 will come down into the denominator. It becomes a positive exponent, so that's 1 over 5 squared. And 1 over 5 squared is 1 over 25. Sometimes there's negatives to go around, so let's try negative 2 quantity uh, negative 2 to the negative 3. Well, first things first, I want to get rid of this negative in the exponent. So I'm going to bring it down into the denominator, the whole thing. Now the negative on the 2 doesn't change, just the negative on the power. So I have 1 over negative 2 cubed. Well, negative 2 cubed is negative 8, so I have 1 over negative 8. And lastly, we don't leave the negative. It's not customary to leave the negative down in the denominator. So we're going to either bring it up to the numerator and get it to the the fraction itself, the whole entire fraction. All right, let's try a fraction. 3 fourths to the negative 2. Well, just like our rule before, we're going to handle this negative. We're going to bring this whole entire fraction down into the denominator. Now I have my rule. I get to say 3 fourths times 3 fourths. Well, that's 3 times 3 on top, 4 times 4 on bottom. So that's 1 over. 9 sixteenths. The 1 over 9 sixteenths will be 1 divided by 9 sixteenths. We don't do division of fractions. We change to the multiplication of reciprocal. So 1 times 16 is 16. 1 times 9 is 9. So the answer, the most simplified answer, is 16 over 9. Let's talk about our next property for exponents. If a and b are any two real numbers, with b not equaling 0, and r is an integer, then a over b all to the r power will be a to the r over b to the r. Now let's consider what if r is negative. Well, that's going to be a over b all to the negative r. Using my property 5, I'm going to give both the numerator and denominator the power, a to the negative r b to the negative r. Now I can rewrite this as a to the negative r times 1 over b to the negative r. Well, a to the negative r is going to be 1 over a to the r. And 1 over b to the negative r is going to be b to the r over 1. Bring those together, that's br over ar, a to the r, leaving me with b over a all to the r. In other words, I'm going to flip my fraction. This negative will force my fraction to be flipped. Or it takes the reciprocal of it. Let's look at property 6 for exponents. If a is any non-real, non-zero real number, and r and s are two integers, then a to the r over a to the s will equal a to the r minus s. And that's because when we bring up the s, it becomes negative. And then we would normally say r plus s, but since it's negative, it's a to the r minus s. Now let's take a few look at these. A few examples. 2 to the 8 all over 2 cubed. Well, according to our rule, that is 2 to the 8 minus 3, 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 5th is 32. Let's look at x. Uh, let's look at the second one. x squared over x to the 18. To my rule, that is x squared minus 18, which is x to the negative 16. We never leave exponents in negative form. 
So we need to make it positive, bring it back down into the denominator. So 1 over x to the 16th. Okay. Third example, a to the 6th all over a to the negative 8. Well, using my rule, that's going to be a to the 6th minus 8, negative 8. Whatever this power is, I bring it up and it becomes negative. So that's a to the 6th plus 8. In other words, a to the 14th. Yeah m to the negative 5 all over m to the negative 7. That's going to be m to the negative 5 minus negative 7. And m to the minus 5 plus 7 is m squared. Mm -hmm. Property 7 for exponents is just about my favorite one. Uh, it just kind of makes our, our workload, uh, once we see this and once we really, really, really understand this, um, it makes our workload a lot easier. Okay, so property 7 for exponents. If a is any real number, then a to the first is a, and a to the zeroth, except for when a equals zero, is one. All right, let's simplify. 2 x squared y to the fourth all to the zero. Well, anything to the zero is one. Therefore, we could distribute this zero according to another property, and then we could do our addition and multiplication and all of that. But if it is to the zero power, whatever it is, it's one. Let's save ourselves some work. Let's just jump to the zero power. All of this is one. Therefore, it's one. Now, if you don't see that, that's okay. According to our other rule, we get to distribute this zero. So that's 2 to the zero, x to the 2 times zero, y to the 4 times 0, that's going to be 2 to the 0, x to the 0, y to the 0. We are assuming x and y are not 0. 2 to the 0 is 1, x to the 0 is 1, y to the 0 is 1, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. But, if you remember, parentheses means everything inside to the 0th power. If everything is to the 0th power, then it is 1. Let's try another example. 2 x squared y to the fourth all to the first power. According to my rule, according to my property, anything to the first power is itself. Anything to the first power is itself. So if we recognize this to the first power, then it is just itself. It's just the stuff there. That's going to be my final answer. But if you're not too sure, go ahead and use your distributive property. So it's going to be 2 to the first, x to the square times 1, y to the fourth times 1. That's 2 to the first, x squared, y to the fourth, giving me 2x squared, y to the fourth. Okay. It's okay if you have to go kind of the long route and you don't make this connection yet. You will. The more you practice with it, you will. All right, let's take a really ugly problem and try and simplify it. x cubed to the negative 2, x to the 4th to the 5th, all over x to the negative 2 to the negative 7th. Again, I can't start crossing off stuff yet until I have basically one thing on top and one thing on bottom. So I'm going to start simplifying. x cubed to the negative 2 is going to be x to the 3rd uh, x3 times negative 2. x to the 4th to the 5th is x to the 4 times 5. And x to the negative 2 to the 4th uh, to the 7th seven, is x to the negative 2 times 7. Ooh, mouthful. All right. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. 4 times 5 is 20. And negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. So I have x to the negative 6, x to the 20th on top. I have x to the negative 14 on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and combine my numerator. So I have x to the negative 6 plus 20. That gives me x to the 14 all over x to the negative 14. These are not the same. These are absolutely not the same, so don't go crossing off stuff. One is positive, one is negative. Now, using my rule, I'm going to bring the exponent that's on the bottom up on top and subtract it x to the negative uh, x to the 14 minus negative 14 is x to the 14 plus 14 which is x to the 28. 
be very, very careful when you're moving stuff around that you get the right size and that you're subtracting and adding in the right places. All right, let's simplify 6a to the 5th, b to the negative 6, all over 12a cubed b to the negative 9. Now, because there's all different kinds of variables and I have numbers, I'm going to separate them, putting all the numbers together, putting all the a's together, putting all the b's together. They're still all multiplied. I'm just giving it a little bit of space so I can see what's going on. 6 over 12 times a to the 5th over a cubed times b to the negative 6 over b to the negative 9. I'm going to deal with these individually. Well, 6 over 12 can be reduced down to 1 over 2. a to the 5th over a cubed will be a to the 5 minus 3. b to the negative 6 over b to the negative 9 will be b to the negative 6 minus negative 9. Now I'm going to just change the sign of the minus negative 9 and create a negative 6 plus 9. So doing the math there, I get 1 half a squared, b cubed. Now I can combine this. This is just one big fraction. So I could put it under one fraction. I don't have the one half out here. I just have it kind of combined. So a squared, b cubed, all over 2. These two answers, same exact thing. The one half a squared, b cubed, and the a squared, b cubed, over 2. Just the last one is um, a little bit more condensed. A couple more examples. Let's say, let's simplify 4x to the 5th, x to the negative 5, y cubed, all squared, all over x to the 4th, y to the negative 6, to the negative 3. Now, I can't separate it yet. I do need to distribute the exponent that's on the outside of the parentheses first before I start kind of lining up things to kind of get the numbers together, the x's together, and the y's together. The first thing I'm going to do is say 2, get, or the power of 2 gets put to the 4. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, and 2 times 3 is 6. So uh, 4 squared, x to the negative 10, y to the 6. I'm going to distribute this negative 3 power. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 3 times negative 6 is positive 18. So I have x to the negative 12, y to the positive 18. Now, both of these denominator values I'm going to bring up and subtract to the power that's already there. That's according to my property. 4 squared, I'm going to go leave it as that right now, x to the negative 10 minus negative 12, y to the 6 minus 18, giving me 6, 16, x squared, y to the negative 12. But I never leave my exponents negative. I've got to make this positive by bringing it back down into the denominator. The final simplified version is 16x squared over y to the 16 or y to the 12. Alrighty, let's find the value of this expression when x is 3. The first thing I would do is simplify it as much as possible and then plug in the value of x. Um, so if we can simplify it by first, great. If we can't, we just got to work with our problem. So the first problem, there is nothing I can do here to, hmm, there is, but I'm going to just jump to plugging in 3, because 3 is not too bad. So 3 cubed minus 8, x squared, uh, 3 squared minus 4. 3 cubed is 27, 3 squared is 9, 27 minus 8 is 19, and 9 minus 4 is 5. Now there's another way of doing this. I'll show it to you in a moment. B, I'm going to plug in 3 wherever I see it. 3 squared plus 2x uh, times 3 plus 4, and two, uh, x minus, plus 2 is going to be 3 plus 2. Well, 3 squared is 9, 2 times 3 is 6, 4, 9 plus 6 plus 4 is 19, 3 plus 2 is 5, so it's 19 over 5. Now let's think about this. Uh, x minus 2 is 3 minus 2, and 3 minus 2 equals 1. And x plus 2 is 3 plus 2, and therefore it's 5. Now here's what I mean about that first one, that, that a, that there's another way of doing it. What if I factored it? 
If I factored it, this is a perfect cube, 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 and if I factor it, when I have, or this is perfect square and this is perfect square, if I factor it, for the numerator I'm going to get x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4. As a refresher, is the cube root of this guy, cube root of this guy, x minus 2. Then to get these values, I'm going to take x and square it, I get x squared. Multiply the two of these together, but it's opposite sign, so it's two, positive 2x. And then take the last term and square it, and you get 4. With the difference of squares, you just need to know that's going to be x minus 2, x plus 2, because I have a 4 here. If I had a 9 here, it would be x minus 3, x plus 3. If there was 25, it would be x plus 5, x minus 5. Now that I have it factored, those factors don't get broken up. They are one blob, one blob, one blob, one blob. And I have a blob on top that looks exactly like the blob on the bottom. Because of that, let's just make that one. I can reduce it. Now my problem becomes x squared plus 2x plus 4 all over x plus 2. I know what x plus 2 is. That's 5. And all I have to do is plug in a 3 here. That's going to be 9 plus 6 plus 14. That's 19 over 5. So I reduced before I did some arithmetic math. That's up to you if you prefer to factor first and reduce. Sometimes that's the easiest way of going about it is factoring first. Just like, you know, if, if, if I had a times 2 on top and a times 2 on bottom, I'd reduce that first and then get to my answer. All right. I think that's enough for this lecture. Until next time, be seeing you.